Music as we all know it is in trouble. Social media is making it increasingly hard to keep the attention of an audience. And as attention spans dissipate, the amount of content consumed is ever rising, distracting listeners with countless artists to listen to every single day. Or worse yet, switch to viewing something entirely different, such as YouTubers, live streams, podcasts, and an ever increasing list of mediums. And therefore, the competition to gain an audience's attention but more importantly, keep their attention for an extended period is now virtually impossible for most. Luckily, one artist is changing that and has set an example for the entire music industry. The concept is to create a world for fans to exist and mingle with others within during the rollout of his upcoming album, I Am Music. He's rejected conforming to all the norms of modern music. He goes months without posting music or anything on social media, yet still fans salivate over his every move. He's revolutionizing music as we see it, but will others be able to keep up? Playboy Cardi has become one of the most influential artists in hip hop over the past few years for a few key reasons. His music, obviously, but Cardi's particular strategy in curating the songs he actually releases sets him far apart from his competition. On each record, he brings a completely different sound from the previous, causing fans to have to adapt to the new sound, even when it emulates a totally different subgenre from what they're used to. For example, Cardi has already famously transitioned, just between the last couple of albums, from bouncy mumble rap to using a baby voice to trap metal, pop, and more recently, deep or pitched down vocals. Therefore, listening to his new music becomes a spectacle, an experience that most other artists cannot fathom to replicate, nor can the fans really anticipate or be prepared for. Not to mention his infrequent, or rather spontaneous release schedule that keeps fans on their toes for the drop regardless of how long they've been waiting. All the while, only officially releasing a total of only three studio projects thus far. Secondly, his aesthetic, and how he curates his image in the public light. After all, the entire opium aesthetic is entirely derived from Cardi's attire, and evolved into a trend of its own with the help of the artists signed to his label that reps similar fashion. To the point where when other artists or influencers in general wear all black outfits, Rick Owens or even Balenciaga are accused of biting his style. His aesthetic is synonymous with an entire color, the most common one at that, and allowed his brand, whether or not someone listens to his music, grow past just his diehard following. And with image and aesthetic trending towards having more importance than simply just music in the age of social media, it has become all the more of an advantage for Cardi especially because he constantly progresses his look into different forms, similar to his music, ever expanding the reach of the so-called opium aesthetic, such as face paint, different color hair, among countless examples. And thirdly, his overall album rollouts. For unlike many artists in mainstream rap who fall out of relevance trying, Playboy Cardi is able to prolong over three year album rollouts, essentially leading fans through a journey within this world that he created with minimal stops for actual credible information in order to speculate upcoming music release dates, major collaborations, etc. A risky approach, but when executed well, can also even extend the life of an artist's career by not needing to rush out content or music so frequently that their creativity runs stale. Inversely, Cardi has ample time to experiment with different eras in his life sound, concepts, and aesthetics for each album. And because of this, he's able to try out various ideas within each project to perfectly craft it for his audience when ready. His album rollouts are simply a story of his real life that fans never really have the chance to peek into, until they hear the album that is. But here's where the magic happens, because many of the top artists have at least one of these favorable traits. However, in Playboy Cardi consisting of all three, a cult-like community is built whereby multiple interests are satisfied, don't really like the sound of the recent music, you probably still enjoy his style or persona, or better yet, the memes and shit posts, or just the people within his dedicated Reddit and Twitter communities that rip jokes every day or talk about common interests of yours. In turn, creating a network effect, in that there is such a variety of viral and funny content posted online about Cardi, yet appeals to a broader audience, that it attracts more people to join the community without him having to lift a finger or spend a dollar on marketing. His community has become a self-sustaining ecosystem of fans that create content for him and sometimes even release music for him. For similar to Yachty's hit track, Poland, that we discussed in our last video, many fans get impatient during the extended rollouts of Cardi's albums. And therefore, there is overwhelming demand for music, including fans that are willing to pay exorbitant amount of money 
for unfinished and or unreleased recordings. And therefore, hackers and leakers alike will then sell music to the communities in private and group buys to fulfill this demand that will eventually be uploaded to public forums for everyone else salivating for the new music. So once again, without Cardi needing to put forth the time, effort, or money into promoting a new single, fans will virtually do all the work for him. Obviously, this process isn't all sunshines and rainbows, because I could imagine the loss in revenue for a song he planned to release. But at the same time, it also opens up an indirect feedback loop with he and his fans. You can now gauge in real time if fans are messing with a certain sound or not before investing time and money into that direction. But more on that later, for these are just some of the ways he benefits from the worlds he has created, one of which that started it all. Whole Lot of Red was one of the most ambitious album rollouts of the decade. Similar to Eternal as Hake and Utopia, Playboy Cardi orchestrated the entire album around a singular concept and persona, his transition into a vampire, allowing him to create a memorable era for himself, whereas most artist discographies can barely be differentiated from one project to another. Therefore, when fans listen to the music, it creates more of a curated experience outside of just the music almost cinematic, since it could have arguably been a soundtrack to a horror film, except instead of just being a movie, he was actually living out this image in real life, something we haven't really seen in rap or music since the days of iconic rock bands like KISS. He was seen as a real vampire, posing in photo shoots with all black robes, blood red hair, sharp teeth, and even exuding an evil mystique in his word choice of written interviews. Whole Lot of Red represented more than just another forced project to keep up with modern trends in hip hop. For an album rollout is a process in which an artist markets their new project to build up awareness and hype to increase the reach for more listeners, as well as excite already acquired fans. Major label artists like Drake, Lil Baby, Jack Harlow, and the like typically follow an order of steps, including revealing the title of the project, posting pictures and video snippets in the studio, previewing some of the music, sharing the track list and features, and finally, the release date. There might be a little bit of a story behind the significance of the project, but since these artists are backed by major label machines with countless employees guaranteeing the success, such as utilizing hundreds of thousands of dollars to be incorporated into publications and blogs leading up to the release, hiring top directors and high budget music videos, or simply paying for slots on the radio and playlist, not much actual creativity even needs to be used. But what if there was a much more efficient way to market an artist's music without spending these millions of dollars? Especially when their career hasn't necessarily been proven to the mainstream just yet. This is what Playboy Cardi has employed with his album rollouts. For instead of spending millions in a guerrilla marketing strategy to put his face in front of as many eyeballs as possible, he draws in new and old fans in just off the strength of his story. After all, isn't that what music is in the first place? telling stories about one's life in a sonically pleasing way. But even so, he definitely has an unorthodox way of telling it. In his normal procedure, he constantly lies about release dates, or at least lets certain narratives run to let anticipation build. Additionally, whether he orchestrated it himself, a multitude of unreleased songs recorded for Whole Lotta Red leaked to the public almost serving as lead singles or a mixtape to feed the fans during the wait, since of course the album released over three years after his sophomore album Die Lit. Once again, perpetuating the creative process behind the album, a part of its story. In fact, multiple alleged versions of Whole Lotta Red leaked prior to its official release, growing his brand far past what an official rollout could do. Version 1 being the most popular and even charting a ripped version of one of its songs on Spotify's viral hits, Kid Cudi or Pissy Pamper, uploaded by an anonymous user during this time period. Although some claim it was actually Young Nudie's song, but regardless, it seems that Playboy Cardi in allowing his fans to participate in his album rollouts, draws many more fans in a fraction of the cost. All of these tactics make both die hard and casual fans eager to know more about Playboy Cardi when he drops new music. Whole Lotta Red will go down in history as a legendary album, and more so, rollout especially due to the final trick up his sleeve, releasing it on Christmas, arguably the most popular holiday in the world. Some thought this would backfire, because the music industry essentially shuts down while everyone is on break for holiday. Not to mention, Mariah Carey, among other Christmas songs, dominating the charts every year around this time. But time and time again, 
Cardi proves that breaking away from typical industry models, if executed properly, can set him apart from the rest. And all the while, embodying a persona of the Antichrist, aka a vampire, on the most holy of days. When it released, Whole Lotta Red charted as the number one album that week and sold over 100,000 copies, almost doubling his last. However, even with this huge jump in his career, Cardi was still nowhere near the place that he is today. Many fans were also skeptical that he could ever do a rollout like this again, or at least wait as long to release the next. Expectedly, they were wrong. Playboy Cardi's next highly anticipated project is tentatively titled I Am Music, although this has yet to be 100% confirmed. At the time of this recording, it's allegedly scheduled to release this month in January of 2024, and somehow, it has managed to gain more hype than Whole Lotta Red. So how does he do it? Immediately following Whole Lotta Red's release, Cardi faced an army of hate online. Whole lot of trash, whole lot of skips, among other hot takes were trending on Twitter. Fans were having a hard time digesting the completely new metal trap hybrid sound that consisted of a majority of the album. In fact, during this time, Cardi almost gave into the hate by declaring there was a deluxe on Twitter, asking fans what songs they wanted instead. Knowing Cardi, no album or songs actually dropped. However, Many of the snippet grails leaked in the months and years afterwards, like Money and Drugs and others, including completely unheard tracks. Perhaps, Cardi allowed this to happen to still appease the fans, while also releasing the music that he actually wanted to at the same time. But eventually, that wasn't even needed, as public opinion began favoring his version of the album, thanks to TikTok and his performances during the King Vamp tour that followed. Not long after the release of this album, three months later, he already started to tease the next, but of course, in the same cryptic fashion he normally communicates in, or rather, lack thereof. Playboy Cardi posts on Instagram with an all-white aesthetic, completely opposite of his vampire aesthetic, captioned, let's drop this new album, we not done yet. Gunnar Stahl, one of his notorious photographers, comments, Molly World. And a few days afterwards, Cardi featured in a Rolling Stone interview speaking on recording every single day for the deluxe version of Whole Lotta Red. Fans knew something was coming, but just not exactly when. Because as we discussed previously regarding Whole Lotta Red, this wouldn't be the first time Cardi teased an album and then waited years to actually release it. And obviously, Molly World has yet to release, or any album that is. But that's what makes his rollout so exciting. It's like a puzzle that his cult must solve with arbitrary information all meshed together just to come to a conclusion that is time and time again, false. And this was just the start. Fast forward to 2021, because nothing of significance really occurred relating to new music by Playboy Cardi. But he had a trick up his sleeve. For over the past couple of years, he had grown a friendship with music and fashion icon Kanye West, who even executive produced and featured on his last album, Whole Lotta Red. Kanye was working on his own album, Donda, and as with most of his albums, similar to Cardi, also executes his album rollouts in methodical ways. More specifically, Kanye invited his entire fan base to participate in the creative process of his album, spending days and nights in the Mercedes-Benz Stadium in Georgia, recording music and playing for the public hours later to give feedback. Playboy Cardi was one of the artists heavily featured in the multiple versions of the album, and given the spectacle Kanye created globally, his name started to get mentioned more and more in the grander scale of hip-hop. Yet another tactic Cardi has employed between his projects, affiliating and collaborating with artists much larger than he, to gain exposure in new audiences. The word narcissist became a popular term in the Cardi fan base after Iggy Azalea's infamous rant about her baby's father on social media, claiming he missed their son Onyx's birth to play the PlayStation with Lil Uzi. While I was pregnant, this man didn't even come to see his son be born. He went to Philly to play the PlayStation with Lil Uzi. He thought that was more important than seeing his son be born. And I had a scheduled C-section, by the way, because my son was so big that they were like, you can't have a natural birth. I'm not still with him, in case you're wondering. No, I'm not still with him. I have to go do business. I didn't want to be a hater. Let him go out there. They thought my son wasn't his son, his fans, because he wasn't there the weekend that he was born. Yeah, I know, because he isn't shit. Not because he's not his son. Not because he's not his son, though. Just because you, you wanted to play the PlayStation, though. Who misses their son's first, their first son being born? 
it's COVID. He's the only person I can, you can only pick one person during COVID when you're having a baby to be on your like approved list. Of course, I picked my son's father to come and be there, but he was busy apparently. Cardi also elected to spend his son's first Christmas at his whole lot of red release party instead of opening presents, adding to the list of reasons Iggy Azalea hated him and believed him to be a narcissist. Regardless, with this fateful word, yet another era was born. So already, within just this latest rollout, Cardi progressed rapidly from the heavenly Molly world back to a demon, Narcissus. KP Beats, Lil 88, among other opium-influenced producers, began previewing new beats to tease the type of music Cardi could be hopping on for this album. The overall theme seemed to be racing-influenced. Cardi even changed his name on Twitter to SVJ, a rare breed of supercharged Lamborghini Aventadors. But still at this point, he hadn't even mentioned the word narcissist himself. It was simply a meme within his community. On August 31st, 2021, Cardi finally played into the joke, except gave it an entirely new meaning. He posted to Instagram with somewhat of an industrial or motorcyclist aesthetic, captioned 9-13-2021, confirming that the narcissist rollout had finally started. Except, yet again, he faked everyone out. Because on the very day it was supposed to release, on September 13th, 2021, his website was allegedly hacked, sported top to bottom with a new Narcissist logo in addition to racing attire, such as a bomber jacket and a motorcycle helmet for sale. But at the time, fans were unaware and still purchased many of the items. For they might not have been gifted any music, but at least they could walk away with something, right? But that wasn't true either. Playboy Cardi announces on Twitter that night with a screenshot claiming that his website was hacked and everyone was refunded. So, fans believe maybe there was still some hope for new music. Two days later, on September 15th, 2021, he tweets another screenshot of a group chat thought to be his team where he stated, forget the sample clearances, drop Narcissist. Unfortunately, yet another bluff, for no solo music has officially released since. Regardless, the hype for his supposed album continued. Uzi and Cardi were spotted together entering a fashion show in unreleased Narcissist merchandise, instigating rumors of a collab between the two old friends. But instead of utilizing this anticipation for an album, he announced a Narcissist tour to begin in mid-October. Many assumed this still meant he was releasing the album due to the name before the tour, because why else would he tease new music and then strictly perform tracks from Whole Lotta Red? It had already been over a year since the project released, but the tour was already slowly approaching and still no signs of any music to come. The tour delayed several times, keeping fans on the edge of their seat because the belief was that he was delaying the tour in order to release an album beforehand so that he could actually perform that new music. But eventually, the show did go on, and unfortunately, without anything of the sort. However, what he did bring was a revolutionary tour that shattered the conventional rap concert of modern times. The tour spanned the entire United States, featuring the talents of his opium label signees, Ken Carson, Destroy Lonely, and Homicide Gang, who recently gained buzz in the underground music scene. So not only was the tour a spectacle for his own fans, but a showcase of his new artists to his much broader audience. Additionally, he opted to perform without a DJ, instead inviting his affiliates, OG Volta, to play live guitar and transitions between songs, while Burberry Airy and Black Hane brought their unique energies to the stage. The shows were reminiscent of metal rock bands of the last century, causing fans to draw comparisons of Cardi's stage presence to that of Travis Scott, the current king of live performances in hip hop. However, even with all this excitement, the entire tour's name changed from Narcissist to King Vamp halfway through shutting down all expectations of another album soon to come. In early 2022, after the King Vamp tour had subsided, Kanye West scheduled another listening party, this time for Donda 2, the sequel to his previous album, held in Miami. And while the last album featured countless artists from mainstream hip hop like Lil Baby and others, Donda 2 heavily favored Playboy Cardi, who appeared to the scene on two new tracks, but with a more notable shift in his style, musically and aesthetically. For Playboy Cardi approached the set with paint covering his entire face during his performance, emerging another new era. Although it could still fit in the King Vamp persona, as vampires are known to be eternal beings with pale skin. Many also attributed his new look to WWE star Jeff Hardy. But regardless of the true inspiration, it was not just a fashion statement, 
but a deeper representation of his reinvention, further solidifying his status as an ever-evolving artist in the hip-hop scene. Moreover, when one of the songs he collaborated with Kanye played, fans were confused, because not only was Future featured on the same track, Mr. Miyagi, but Cardi's voice also mirrored his deep, auto-tuned flow completely opposite of his past baby voice and raspy rock tones from the Whole Lotta Red era. Little did fans know, this would be the next shift that they have grown accustomed to at this point in his career. For a couple months later, Cardi broke his long-standing silence and made yet another rare media appearance through a written interview with XXL, a pivotal moment for his fan base regarding upcoming music. In the interview, he finally unveiled his next project's tentative title, Music. He also briefly mentioned the name of one of the tracks he was working on called Wicked, which fans have come to hear many months later. However, it was in Cardi's explanation to the album's title that made it so intriguing. He referred to it simply as music, reflecting a raw, unadorned approach to his craft. However, there was another much more controversial source of attention that people gravitated towards within this interview. In an unexpected twist, the interview also inadvertently fueled personal speculations regarding his sexuality. This was due to a specific quote cut too short from Cardi that quickly spread online, in which he responded to a question regarding being comfortable wearing face paint, something seen as more feminine in today's genre. I wouldn't give a fuck because it's like, I love everybody, I don't judge nobody, I have gay friends, I have trans friends, you know what I'm saying? I done dated. While other rappers may have been crucified for saying such words, the speculation instead actually enhanced Cardi's mystique in the public eye, further proving how little fans really know about their favorite artists. At this point, the anticipation for his next move was undeniable. So much in fact that ASAP Rocky, his initial label owner, wanted in on the action and leaked a music video on Instagram with a collaboration from the two titled Sites. It featured a lo-fi AUG music video, an iconic style from the past decade when ASAP was still in his prime. Obviously, with ASAP's previous mentorship of Cardi at the beginning of his career, no one thought anything about leaking the song himself. But Opium Baby, one of Cardi's ANRs that typically announces new information on his behalf, spoke out against Rocky. Cardi's engineer, Fritz Owens, reiterated these feelings about the situation potentially confirming that Cardi gave no authorization for ASAP Rocky to release the song. However, with Cardi's infamous reputation for never releasing fully finished recordings, can we really blame ASAP? Or was Cardi's team justified in rolling out the music on their schedule since he now was the star artist in the lineup? Regardless, this wasn't the only relationship that turned sour amidst this leak misunderstanding, in that Pierre Bourne actually defended Rocky on Twitter, laughing while stating, don't bite the hand that feed you, referencing the fact that ASAP Rocky played a massive role in Playboy Cardi's come up as he once was the ultimate co-sign to jumpstart careers. Not to say that Cardi didn't have any of his own traction, but being signed to ASAP definitely didn't hurt. Therefore, he already did so much for Cardi, why would he spite him for wanting to be reciprocated later on? Not to mention the fact that being his literal label owner, technically Rocky could have the power to free some of his royalty payments. All the while, further severing the bond between he and Pierre Bourne, known as one of the most iconic producer-rapper duos in recent times. So it seemed as though two bridges were burned with one song, but that was nothing short of ordinary during Cardi's career as that has become a rather regular occurrence. And yet somehow, none of his fans really blamed him, likely stemming from the fact that Cardi never actually engaged in the argument himself, his team did. Thus, by never really speaking on any of his controversies, he remains shielded from any backlash. Although, Cardi couldn't evade this one. For Narcissus, the age-old concept by this point, finally officially debuted on his website with a collection of apparel. The products ranged from hoodies, hats, among other expensive items, but with a rather alarming twist. The graphics used within the clothing line featured very peculiar mugshots of, let's say, eccentric personalities. At first, many believed them to have a theme of very grungy looking criminals with face tattoos, but upon further research, they drew another conclusion. Virtually all of the individuals were prosecuted for horrendous crimes dealing with domestic and or child abuse. Now, given these crimes, there was probably an indirect correlation to the appearance of these criminals, but still many fans were questioning the motivation behind the drop, but somehow still Social media forgot or didn't care only weeks later. Only a testament to Playboy Cardi's power. After all, 
the collection was called Narcissist. So what were we expecting? The beginning of the next year was pretty silent for Cardi, at least by his measures. No features, no news, or music in sight. But out of nowhere in February of 2023, legendary Atlanta DJ Swamp Izzo bombs the scene with a new announcement. <laughs> Swamp Izzo, Playboy Cardi album is done. Oh. I'm gonna get that to work, man. Swamp oh. Izzo and Playboy Cardi's album done. is done. It follows up with further insider information that the new album would release in the summer. Now, Swamp Izzo isn't exactly the spokesperson you would expect from Cardi, such as the previous like Kanye or Matthew Williams sporting high fashion. Izzo's brand is more in line with the Atlanta trap scene, more well known for spinning cash money records names like Lil Wayne. Because of this, many fans were skeptical of the relationship. But what many forget is that Atlanta is Playboy Cardi's home city. Swamp Izzo also hinted that Cardi's new project would be tailored to the day one fans completely opposite of Whole Lotta Red, potentially more hip hop centric rather than rock influenced. Though unfortunately, Swamp Izzo didn't seem too aware of Cardi's mysterious demeanor, for the summer came and went, and still no album. But that didn't really matter. For at this point in his career, Cardi had built a brand and label that superseded just his own music. In the following years after Whole Lotta Red, he had successfully signed and exponentially grown three new artists. Ken Carson, Destroy Lonely, and Homicide Gang, which is actually a rap duo, who had already begun dominating the underground rap scene beneath him. They dropped several albums all together visibly under the Opium label imprint that perpetually increased his personal chokehold over the cult-like underground community in addition to their own careers. Both sides benefited. The artists received a larger platform to promote their music, along with high-end production among other industry standards, and Cardi maintained his relevance in the underground whereas most artists upon going mainstream lose all of their old fans to the newly emerging artists. And this can likely be attributed to how selective Cardi is with who he co-signs. If he cannot see a benefit in collaborating with another artist, making an appearance at an event, it doesn't matter how much he's getting paid. It's even been rumored that he makes strippers among other associates present with him sign NDAs in order to keep his mysterious persona and brand. He's taught his artists the same for the most part. However, how does he maintain such relevance so well when he's essentially never in the public eye, at least purposely? Strategic features. The last three features Playboy Cardi has collaborated on during the rollout of his upcoming album were all artists much larger than him, such as Travis Scott on the track Fiend within his Utopia album, pop icons The Weeknd and Madonna on the Idol soundtrack, and Kanye West on several tracks within both of the Dondas. And I can't help but believe this is by design. Because many of the time, rappers will sell features for tens or even hundreds of thousands of dollars to smaller artists hoping to widen the reach of the song. While this lines the pockets of the featured artists, this process also dilutes their brand. Cardi, on the other hand, grows his brand further with every feature by working with iconic artists that encompass fan bases exceeding his own, and even in different genres, not to mention enhancing his level of exclusivity and hype when he actually does decide to collaborate with other artists proven by the fact that many of the features that come to fruition tend to be the high sellers, though a majority of said collabs fail to receive clearance for release. Such as Lil Uzi Vert's most recent album, Pink Tape, by which many fans were under the presumption that Cardi being age-old friends with Uzi would be a feature. Even a track between the two rappers surfaced hours before its release on Twitter, however, they were wrong. Kinda. While no official collab released on major streaming platforms like Spotify and Apple Music, for some odd reason, believed to be a mistake by Uzi's label, an unreleased track with both Cardi and Uzi was uploaded onto his YouTube channel in place of another song on the album. Soon after, we find out that Cardi was originally supposed to be on Pink Tape, but revoked his feature due to it not representing the type of music he made anymore. Which to be fair, it was a bit outdated from his most recent deep voice songs like Fiend. What's even more ironic than Cardi failing to appear on Uzi's album is Uzi's involvement with his artists. For upon his album's release, he was spotted in an interview with Mont Reality partying with the both of them, and soon after brought them out to a performance at Governor's Ball in NYC. At this point, fans noticed that Uzi was promoting Cardi's artists more than he was, confusing to say the least, considering Cardi and Uzi were rarely seen together anymore. Nonetheless, props to Uzi for showing love, even allowing Ken to produce one of the tracks on Pink Tape. 
And while Playboy Cardi's career was at an all-time high due to the release of Fiend with Travis Scott the next month, he finally came back home to claim his children. For antagonist billboards began surfacing around the world and shared on all of his affiliate social medias, revealing that it would be an international arena tour spanning the US and Europe alongside his entire opium roster of artists. However, we already know how all this turned out, because we are still currently in the midst of the delays. Originally scheduled to kick off in early September for the US leg, his fans who purchased tickets already started scrambling for answers when the date slowly approached while venue after venue notified fans the show would be canceled and or postponed. Until finally, every single show from the US roadmap was unlisted from the official website, which was honestly to be expected considering Cardi had still yet to release any new music. Therefore, he would need to perform the same track list from the last tour. But perhaps, he actually did have some new music under his belt, just needed to get some feedback first. Because during the wait for the antagonist tour, Playboy Cardi was scheduled to headline the Wireless Festival beside Travis Scott and 50 Cent, above Lil Uzi Vert, I might add. And in the course of his performance, he previewed a new track that he allegedly just recorded in the tour bus produced by Filthy, titled Rockstar. Fans deem the song to sound similar to that of Whole Lotta Red, but it's had more heavy metal trap, fitting with his upgraded aesthetic. But more importantly, that this could very well be the creative direction for his next album especially due to the fact that prior to performing the new track, the DJ cut a sampled intro Music. hinting the song may be on the track list for the album, or another lie. For not long after, over a year following Cardi's reference to an unheard song titled Wicked in his controversial XXL interview, it leaks online with an alternate title, Killers. Now, no one is completely sure if it is the exact same song he was referencing, but regardless, the point remains that it was completely opposite of Rockstar, consisting of a much more Atlanta trap-centric sound similar to Cardi's features on Fiend and Donda 2. I guess Swamp Izzo didn't cap after all. It is now September of 2023, and while the first half of the antagonist tour may be postponed, Playboy Cardi still gave the fans something to work with. On the night of his birthday, he and his team posted a cryptic Instagram story later discovered to be a promotion flyer for a free party he was throwing in Atlanta. Fans could get free opium tattoos, bump shoulders with the opium artists, and of course, listen to exclusive songs performed by their favorite artist, Cardi. He showcased two new major collabs to feed on for the time being, including Lil Uzi Vert on the track fans titled Justin Bieber, and another with Travis Scott, both incorporating the new deep voice all the more confirming the new direction for music, but more importantly, another opportunity to drop. Especially because the night before, DJ Swamp Izzo, who claimed to be hosting Cardi's next project, previewed a two second intro to one of the songs they recorded, and moreover, that he would reveal the entire song the next day. But obviously, that didn't pan out since Cardi played his own music the next day at his birthday party, never giving Izzo and his other radio hosts permission to showcase the new music. Though we did feature on the show momentarily dodging question after question about their track together, simply screaming, You want to give yeah. it to the world, right? But since it's your birthday, with your blessings, your honor, I want to leak it to the world. I want to just go ahead and just give it a little sample, not the whole thing, just a sample. What is <laughs> The next month in November, however, Cardi collaborated with another DJ, Academics revealing insider information that Cardi's season was allegedly in full effect and that the track list will be revealed very soon. It is coming. Your prayers have been answered. The guy is ready. He's ready. And with Whole Lotta Red's three year anniversary approaching at the end of the year, fans excitement grew for another surprise Christmas gift from Santa himself. And come December, Santa arrived with presents, multiple at that four new songs throughout the month, but for some odd reason, not on any official streaming platforms. Two exclusive music videos on YouTube and two on his alternate Instagram, Opium Opium. I guess this was his latest convoluted strategy that we have never seen before by any artist. For typically, you would think that after waiting almost three whole years without releasing any solo music, an artist would want to generate some revenue from their music and attempt to widen its reach as much as possible by displaying it on Spotify and Apple Music. However, Cardi did the exact opposite. 
which has become a theme throughout his entire career, being anti basically everything that typical artists do. Posting on social media? No. Communicating clearly with fans when he is dropping music? No. Releasing music on all platforms? No, sir. But somehow, this actually attracted more eyeballs than if he did. Because by spontaneously hosting new songs exclusively on specific social medias, it created a network effect. Not only do fans get excited when they have to find such easter eggs, but they also started posting it everywhere, even on Spotify and Apple Music, for him to share the good news. Almost as if they were a part of the rollout themselves. Cardi then began reposting various streamers, influencers, fan pages, and blogs on his Instagram story showing love, repeating the cycle of content to then be reposted again by outlets. Not to mention being able to experiment with different sounds, voices, and beats without much commitment, similar to that of a leak. And still, his music videos were trending number one on YouTube for over a week by artists with much more complex marketing strategies and budgets. Of course, he had the help of Kanye on the production of 2024 and Travis Scott on the feature of Backrooms, but nothing could deny Cardi's influence in music after this move. And so I guess all we can do now is wait, because knowing Playboy Cardi, this rollout could very well extend for another year, no matter how conclusive the evidence is. But that's exactly why he has reached such heights in his career. Being able to constantly keep listeners' attention effortlessly while not actually providing much information at all. Other artists have tried to replicate this method, but time and time again failed, losing all the relevance they built over the years, as we already discussed in a previous video. His rollouts are undoubtedly only true to him, which is precisely how he changed music forever.